largest IP provider to the federal government. And as such, we have a very strong interest in cybersecurity for those um, IP solutions that we provide and have, already been, have always provided. I mean, our tagline is about mission success. And for us, that includes security and cybersecurity as part of that. But um, we participate in the policy environment, which is where I sit. So that's my company, but I sit in the, in the policy office. And we look at policy and regulation for how that will affect are being able to design and provide uh, solutions uh, both for internal purposes as well as for our customers' purposes. So we engage with um, uh, what I'll call in collaborative work and partnerships with, with customers, but as well as many partners in industry. Um, we're very focused on what an earlier panel called the collaboratory, which is working. We have a Lockheed Martin Security Alliance, which uh, features, I, I know, several folks that are actually in this room. Um, from Juniper to RSA, EMC, and we work together trying to develop what we'll call leap ahead technologies that are more proactive and predictive rather than just reactive tools. So for example, any policies or legislation that would seek to t freeze frame current solutions as the solutions that um, should be adopted would fail to be able to take into account uh, leap ahead development. And so we'd be concerned about that. We would want to work with folks to educate about how fast and how important it is to be able to adapt new technologies to the cyber threats that continue to emerge. Because I think given the, the education level of this audience, we all know that there is no static cyber threat. There's no one place to focus. And, and one of the things that I think it's fair to say that we're, we're also recognizing is that it's not all technology um, solutions that are the issue, but also education and the focus on uh, human behaviors and the focus on the individual actions. So with that in mind, we've started and we're working with our partners as well. To, uh, we launched yesterday our own, in, in honor, I guess, of the uh, National Cybersecurity Awareness Month, our own internal cybersecurity awareness campaign, which focuses exactly on that individual action. Uh, the first can spam case was brought, we had the press conference, and the Australian authorities particip participated live from Australia. As we were bringing the case on this side, they were shutting the servers down in Australia. I wish Bobby were still here because he might be able to talk to this a little bit. I know the FBI has been involved, you know, on, to use an overworked, overworked term, on the ground in Romania on a takedown. So that kind of thing is happening. A, a major case, a Soloway, a, a Rolski that has international ramifications would, would be better. There's no question. But at least it's ramping up, and I also agree with Ms. Liesel's point. Um, law enforcement can just go just so far, and I think public-private cooperation, um, pub private self-regulatory measures can also go a long way toward uh, trying to be uh, more proactive than you can be in law enforcement, when again, you got to wait till something bad's happened. One of the things that we see every day and that we're very, very concerned about every day is the growth in the number and the size of denial of service attacks. We've seen them as large as 60 gigabits per second, which would crush most ISPs um, in individual locations. Um, attacks that large are pretty noisy and they tend to draw a lot of attention and they, they tend um, to send up all sorts of flares about what, what uh, the motives might be behind them or where they might be coming from. And almost always it becomes an international problem. It is not uh, just a problem that the U.S. alone will solve. Uh, while we may establish cybersecurity policies and we may establish laws and we may um, uh, even establish organizations to fight uh, these issues, um, it is still an international problem. And this problem crosses multiple borders and can come from anywhere. And the tougher restrictions get in one country, then the attacks will move to another country. Um, Asia, for example, um, has, has appears to have been the source for a lot of uh, denial of service attacks and hacking attempts, but it's difficult to attribute them to those specific areas, just that the machines generating the traffic are coming from those areas. Um, those areas of the world have extremely high piracy rates, which means that they're not registered users, which means that they're not getting security updates um, to, to uh, protect their systems as they come out. Um, so, so to step back a little bit about that announcement. And one thing we did in doing that report, which I think was uh, unprecedented, at least uh, for the White House, is to go out and engage a huge number of stakeholders. I think we, we, we had we met hundreds of people and, and many, many, many meetings. We got about 
200 submissions from different groups. We met with industry groups. We met with other private sector groups. We met with civil liberties and privacy groups. Uh, we thought it was very important to get that input and putting this together. And since that time in May, we've been carrying forward on some of those, uh, those core uh, short-term goals and mid-term goals that we've been looking at. So, so to give you an idea of, of what some of those are, um, you know, one of those things um, is building an incident response plan, for instance, in the U.S. You know, that it seems odd that in this area where you could have, uh, you know, ca catastrophic, possibly catastrophic attacks that have launched uh, competitive networks or at least have real bad effects, that we don't have a comprehensive, integrated plan to respond. Uh, and that's something that's underway. DHS is leading that. We're very closely involved. We're working with the private sector. And there is both the domestic component and the international component because, again, you have to work with partners in doing this. And that's true for the law enforcement realm, which is the realm I came from originally, from DOJ and the FBI and uh, being a prosecutor. But it's also true across the board in everything, from setting, uh, you know, working on your standards, governance standards, and everything. Mm -hmm.